Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today, we are discussing the book, Love in Maine, which I can't believe it was a storyline in 2013. I know. But now that we know how old Molly is, I mean, it makes sense. It was a really good book. But, it was. But no, not not for a, a child, young adult to write. Well, so let's give us let's give a background on the storyline first. Okay. So Love in Maine was a book that was published by Hyperion Books on March 12th, 2013. On General Hospital, it was written by Molly Lansing Davis, but the book was published in the real world with the author listed as Connie Falconeri. And this is when Connie was the guru at Crimson. Mm -hmm. So in General Hospital... Molly wrote a novel about a young woman named Maddie Post in Maine who finds love with a man named Hank. And she was like 12 when this book came out, yeah. or when she wrote this book. Right. The book is titled Love in Maine. The first person she tells about the no novel is her Michael's then-girlfriend star Manning, a.k.a. the only one of Michael's lovers to still be alive. <laughs> but she got written off the show. <laughs> Sorry. After, well, I guess Anne still Willow. After Star reads the first 50 pages of the book, she convinces Molly to take her manuscript to her father, Todd Manning, who owns two publishing houses. Star and Molly convince Todd to read the novel and consider publishing it. Molly tells Todd that it's about the kind of love that hurts, the kind of love that isn't good for you, but you keep going back to because you keep thinking it'll be different. Yes. Yes, it was. Connie Falconeri, an alternate personality of Kate Howard, shares an office with Todd. When Connie arrives in the empty office, she finds Molly's manuscript on the desk, reads it, steals it, and starts editing it. So maybe that's where all the smut comes in. Mm -hmm. When Molly and her boyfriend, TJ Ashford, come looking for it later, Connie denies knowing anything about it. Suspecting that Connie is lying, Molly and TJ obtain internships at Connie's magazine, Crimson, to investigate. The teens tear apart Todd slash Connie's office looking for it and fight with Connie about her stealing it, which Connie denies. Todd then informs them that his publishing house says that the manuscript was given to them by the author, Connie Falconeri, and that it's going to be published. TJ and Molly try to convince Todd to get Connie's name off the book and Molly's on it, but he tells them to take it up with Connie. Later, Molly's mother, Alexis Davis, informs Todd and Connie that she is suing them. Alexis obtains a copy of the book from the publisher and reads it and is appalled by how graphic it is. Molly tells her mother that she did not write the graphic parts, that Connie sexed it up. Later, Todd catches Molly's sister, Sam Morgan, breaking into his safe in his office. Sam tells him that she is looking for Molly's manuscript, and Todd denies that Connie stole Molly's book. On March 12th, the book is released, and Alexis, Molly, TJ, and his guardian, Sean Butler, who we now know is his dad, go to the book launch thinking that Kate has reemerged and that she will give credit for the book to Molly. Connie, however, returned and now is in control and takes all the credit for the book. On March 14th episode, Connie reveals that Molly is the true author. She states that Molly is the writer who created the plot, the characters, and general story of the novel, and that she only edited in the sexual phrases and scenes in the novel. Which, <laughs> yes, she did. So the novel's plot is a college athlete who is living at Janet Gilbertson's guest room in Blake, Maine for the summer. Maddie falls for Hank, an army dri diver, and Janet's son, among other things, Maddie and Hank fend off Maddie's aggressive ex-boyfriend and encourage Janet's relationship with diner owner Phil. What happens when Maddie has to go back to school and Hank leaves for a mysterious, possibly dangerous assignment? I don't feel like that's a good description of the book. No. <laughs> because, yeah, he was not encouraging his mom's relationship. He wasn't. No, she, she kind was. of was. Yeah, she did. She wanted her to be happy, but he was not part of encouraging all of that. And... Sending off her ex-boyfriend was like a blip. Right. It was not even a full page. No. So there was, so when we meet her, when we meet Maddie, she's having an interview at this diner and she's, we hear it in her head, you know, she's lying about her experience as a server. And then she winds up offering to work for the day as part of the interview. And she does very badly and gets demoted down to dishwasher, or placed as dishwasher. And she's not good at that either. No. <laughs> And then she goes to the house of the woman whose ad she found on Craigslist mm -hmm. for $200 a 
a month, right, to rent a room. Yep. In Maine. Mm-hmm. To spend the summer. Right. And that's, and she doesn't have a cell phone. She doesn't have anything because apparently she made a bet with her brother that she could not, he bet her that she could not survive an entire summer without her cell phone, without. And talking to her mom, that would be the yeah. worst part. Cause she was like the baby of the family and spoiled and had a close connection. She's the only with the girl. She's, she has four brothers or there's four of them and she's the only girl. Them. Yeah. But yeah, she's the baby. She's, her parents are very well off. She's never had to work a day in her life. She gets everything handed to her. She goes to an Ivy League college. She's on the rowing team. Mm-hmm. She's star athlete. She's an archaeology. It's not archaeology, but it's like stuff from the past. Antiquities. Is she studying antiquities? No, that wasn't what they called it. Okay. I forgot what they called it. Because she said to him, are you going to make fun of me now? And he was like, no, that's awesome. I love old stuff. What are you talking about? Yeah. But so then she meets Hank at Janet's house and turns out that it's her son who just came home from the army. And, and he was a jerk. He was. He was such a jerk to her. Wouldn't even, he was like, you're just getting this woman off Craigslist to live with you, which no offense. Kind of understand his point there. I understood his point there, but he was whining about how much she was charging and she obviously didn't need money either. Right. I mean, their house wasn't a mansion or anything, but. She had enough money to do her stuff. Well, I think she was trying to prove a point to him, too. Like, yeah, I'm renting out your room. Exactly. Go do something about it. Right. And they became good friends. That was the whole point. Yes. She needed some companionship, and he wasn't giving it to her because he was locked up in his apartment yep. over the garage. Yep. So don't whine about how much money she's getting. But it was funny because when she was at the diner and mentioned whose house she was staying at, at that point, the diner owner was like, okay, yeah, you can have a job here. I like that they kept that relationship on the down low at first, though. Yeah. She was like, wait, you're dating who? How? And I liked that she was normal about that, too. Whenever they would talk about double dates or going somewhere together, she was like, I don't really want to spend my weekend hanging out with my boss. I'm sorry. That's not what yep. I want to do. Yep. Especially when Hank was trying to ditch her. Right. And she's like, let alone. But I did like that she also had companionship in his mom. Mm hmm. Because they would just read. They enjoyed the same kind of books. They enjoyed appreciation of books the same way that she's like, I don't try to crack a spine of a book. Yeah, I remember the craziest things. <laughs> yes, yes. Who started flirting with who first? She did. Yeah. Absolutely. The little things too, like she wasn't going to mess up the book and he made her lunch the one day when they went camping and she was like, oh, what's the secret ingredient for your food? It was very, very sexed up though. Like. Connie must have done a lot of rewriting there. Yes. Because there was not a scene that you weren't feeling that sexual tension. Nope. Yeah. So she was totally trying because she caught him looking at her. Yeah. And she's like, okay, he likes what he sees. So then she made sure that he saw what he was looking at. Mm hmm. I like that he commented on her matching undies. The when first, was that? The first time that they hooked up. You were like so far ahead. We are still in the kitchen from their first I don't meeting. Care. I'm just telling you <laughs> stuff that, that I liked. I liked that he noticed the little things. That's not really a little thing. It is. It's a little thing. I don't know that most men notice that. They're concentrating on getting it off of you. <laughs> the clothes off of you. I'm pretty sure that guys notice that. I don't think. I don't think they notice when they don't, but I sure as heck think that they notice when they do. Mm. When you wear something like that, you are wearing it for a reason. Notice. She said that she wasn't wearing it for a reason. Oh, yeah, she, she was. Just wears she wears that all the time. No. Maybe she... if you have enough money, that's all you have is matching sets. Oh. See? Possibly. That it, I thought she was saying, I didn't think she was serious when she said no. Oh, so I yeah. thought she was being coy. No, I thought that it was like high end. That's what you do all the time. No, I was just like, of course she did. Hmm. We need some fancier friends than us to ask them if they're wrong. I really don't, I really don't care about it. That's the thing. <laughs> just wonder. But <laughs> so, yeah, so eventually they wind up going on a camping trip together. Well, no, she kissed him. I'm sorry. I was ahead. I was thinking of the things I liked of him because he was such a jerk in the beginning. It took me a while to get there. Because she was smitten all, like, the first Oh, yeah, first but she day. was playing hard to get. She was playing hard to get. But she caught him out on being a jerk. Mm-hmm. And then she kissed him. Yeah. And then they started hanging out a little bit. And then they decided to go camping. And then I did like that before anything happened, like, she was able to hold her own and, like, carry the... Well, she didn't get to carry the canoe, but... She got to show him, like, no, I am not a prissy little girly girl. Like, I'm right. not who you think I am. Yes. And her story made sense. She grew up with brothers, and they would make fun. They didn't want to take her on the first camping trips because she was a girl, and so no girls allowed. And she was like, mm, no, we changed that real fast. Yep. What did they say? The no girls? No girls 
no girls on camp or no girls camp Some, trip. It was like yeah. not a full sentence. But when he was like, do you know how to take care of a fish after you caught it? Like, oh, yeah. care of a fish. And she's like, yep, no girls here or something like that. And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? And, and then, then she, she had to explain it. it. Yep. Yeah. But I like how she was getting frustrated because she's like, because in rowing, you go, I guess you pull the same time in the same way and canoeing, I guess you don't. Right. Canoeing, you're on one side and the other person's mm-hmm. on the other side. This is the frustration. And she's like, well, you just stop. I saw it with uh, Madeline the other day when we were at Girl Scout camp. I'm like, you're on the wrong side. Stop. I did like that it kind of touched on PTSD though. Yes. Could have done a little bit more, but that was part of his hesitation was that he had just come back after like 10 years being active duty. Mm -hmm. And then he started having like flashbacks of bombs that he had set off or put together. And then she asked him if he was ever shot and he's like, no, but I've been shot at. Right. And then, yeah, so they got, they hung out at the campfire and then they were fine that night and then woke up the next morning and decided to get to know each other a little bit better. I like the way you put that. Still trying to keep our G rating. Well, they they just slightly got to know each other. There. It is not a bedtime story for no. children. No girls on trip. No girls on trip. No girls on trip. Sorry, I had to find it because she said it several times. And he it's was like, like 50 what shades of gray for GH. It is. It is. It was very... Oh, okay. No, because I didn't read 50 shades of gray, so I don't know. Well, okay. This is the... Mm, because so, there was only maybe five to ten pages out of over 200 that were... I would say this is the R-rated version of Fifty Shades, where Fifty Shades should be like a X rating. Because Fifty Shades goes into detail. Okay. Like, into detail. So okay. this does not... This does not say... You just... You get what's going on. There was like... There was like two or three pages there that were pretty... But even then, they didn't use the words to describe True. exactly what was happening. So is it like a Harlequin romance? I've never read Neither that. have I. So I hope I'm those, bad at being a girl. I hope those aren't that steamy. This was like steamy. It was steamy, yes. Like I would not have wanted even Megan reading over my shoulder, which I'm sure she's heard way worse than what was in this but book. Still. But I still would be like, no, don't read over my shoulder. Yeah. But I would prefer But it wasn't this. the whole thing. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. But I would prefer... Like Emily read this than Fifty Shades because Fifty okay. Shades is no. I have absolutely no desire. That's I just I tried to read it because everyone made such a big deal about it, but it wasn't even like this. As you were reading it, you were like, "Oh, like I could see you like playing that out in real like life." Like you're getting blushed. Yes, you know? exactly. It's like Bridgerton. There you go. There you go. It's like Bridgerton. That was perfect. Yes, that was perfect. There we go. I'm glad you thought of that. Yes, that's where we are. Hmm. It made you like a little uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to know this. Yes. But, but it was good that you did want to know it. Mm-hmm. That was, that's a perfect description of it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Netflix. Exactly. For giving us a toned down. So can you hurry up and give us the second season? Because I'm Seriously. so mad. I can only watch the first season so many times. But back to the book. Yes. And then he ghosts her. Oh, he totally ghosts her. And it's so cute. Because you think totally of a college student or a young woman, though, because their windows face each other. And so whenever they were, like, talking. That's right. They, um, she pulled the blinds open and put the, or she pulled the curtains back and put the blinds open. So they, they flirted kind of a like little bit. See each other. And they knew they could hear each other, like, when his car would pull in or when she would leave or whatever. And then whenever he ghosted her, she was like, whatever, and put her blinds back down and shut the yep. curtains. So it was like, yes, yep. jerk. Good, good job. And then she calls him out on it. And she's mm-hmm. like, I'm not falling in love with you. Knock it off. Right. Because that's what his fear was. He's like, oh, no, now she's going to be needy and fall in love with me. Right. Kind of cocky of you. Yeah. And then she blurted out to his mom. Yes. Oh, yes. But the mom was trying to set them up. They were right. to the movies and she kept inviting them for dinner and whatever. So the mom was happy that they got there eventually. Yes, I agree. Well, and then what happened? Yeah, so like they they were oh, hanging she out. Was, so she was um frustrated, so she went for a run, and she yes. ended up at like a dead end. And somebody came out of the driveway, and was like, it turned out to be somebody that she knew from college. And then they mentioned her ex being around, and she was like, No, we're done. And he said, That's not the way he makes it sound. You're just on a temporary break. And she said, No. And that was whenever the real feelings came out. Then she saw them later. On 4th of July weekend. Oh, geez. 4th of July weekend is whenever everything happened. So 4th of July weekend, 
there watching the parade. And he finally held her hand and he in finally public. held her hand. And whenever the jerky ex-boyfriend came up and said something nasty to her, he like called her honey or baby or something before he punched out the other guy. Yep. And then he was like, we're going to, I'm going to take her home. Like she needs to be away from this. And he called her honey or something there then. And then they went back to his house and made their own fireworks because it was the 4th of July. And that was how the relationship relationship really started. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it didn't occur to me. I didn't occur to me at all fourth that it was July. the 4th of July. I mean, I know <laughs> that it was the 4th of July, but it didn't, did not compute. Yep. Stuck out in my with head. With you. So of course it did. Of July. They made their own fireworks. And then they made lots of fireworks afterwards, like every day for the next. And then summer was coming to an end and they start getting paranoid about the fact that it's all coming to the end. And so they decide to take a fancy trip to Boston and stay at a $10,000 a night. That was insane. Room First of all, at the Ritz Carlton. You never knew that he had any money. You nope. just assumed that he came home from the army and was living over his mom's garage because he didn't have a lot of money saved up and he was using that time to decompress before he got sure. back out in the world. Right. Totally made sense. And she's looking at the one suite and she's like, I only have $5,000 saved and this is going to be like 3000 something. Well, it was her first That's time seeing much. what the actual price was right, too. Right, because they comped everything. Yes. Yep. And she had to struggle with that. Should she call and get them comped or should she pay for it herself? So she was like, yeah, we can't stay in the $3,000 room. That's too much. And then he looked at the more expensive one and was like, I want to see you laying on that bed and said, go ahead and book it for $10,000 for the weekend. That's crazy. That's insane. I have so many other things I could do with that money. Oh, my mind went to, if you're going to spend that much on her, why wouldn't you just buy her a ring that costs that much? But okay. <laughs> That's what I would have spent the 10000 on. But, or there's that. <laughs> I mean, whatever. And so then they're in the hotel and she meets some fancy pants people that she knows from her dad. Yep. And it turns out that the dad knows the boyfriend because he developed something for scuba diving. Like some kind of fiber optic thingy. Yeah. Like equipment thingy. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so then she's like, oh, okay. You, and she get he gets her into the library because she can't get into where she wants to go to for the library. And mm -hmm. he gets her in for that, which was sweet. Because she wanted to go see a book. Mm -hmm. So That sweet. was sweet. And then it was the end of summer. Right. And she said, no, do not take me back to the train station. I'm going to get the train here and go home. We're saying goodbye here. Yep. And she called him out on his stuff then. She was like, when you figure out why it is that you think you can't have me, come get me. Yep. See you later. Yep. And she went and got on the train. And then he worked on himself and he got himself some therapy and got himself to be okay to deserve her on his own without her having to make any ultimatums or anything. Although I guess that kind of was an ultimatum. Yeah. It was, but in the meantime, she was like, by the way, not waiting around. Yeah. You want me? You know where to find me. And you got to put in the work. Yep. Meanwhile, she totally waited for him. Of course she But did. he didn't know that. No. But of course, uh, after a love like that, oh my gosh, of course she was waiting for him. Not everyone makes you feel that flushing butterfly -y as this man did for her. After three months, though, call me when it's three years later. And let me know how they still are. Okay. Because I doubt that it's still that way. Although she did say, well, because then his parents, oh, that was the thing. His parents were alcoholics and his dad had actually died because he drove his car into a tree and his mom was recovering and she was sober. So she didn't keep alcohol in the house. But I did like the fact that his mom did not give him crap for having beer in his place. Right. And I liked that Maddie knew right away to not, she could drink. She didn't put anything in the fridge and tempt her yep. at all she was respectful yep. of that they didn't even ask that but she was like nope I'm not gonna do that to yep. you absolutely but when they went out to dinner she got beer right yeah or i like that at his apartment yep but so she had grown up where i guess her parents still loved each other and all that fun stuff and he came from a broken home mm -hmm. and that's difficult to understand actual love right till he found her and then he worked on himself he sent her a coin like a super super rare coin for christmas so she's at home with her parents and they so she cries to her mom first like when she gets home and is like i like oh like, I'm like, that was one of my favorite parts that as they're leaving meeting that fancy couple she says to him oh i'm sure that that lady's calling my mom and he's like what and she's like never mind it doesn't matter so whenever she's crying to her mom the mom first is like it's not that jerky ex-boyfriend right and she's like no 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 not him and the mom instantly is like well was it that hot guy you were at the hotel with because i know all about that yep she yep that was funny <laughs> but so she 
you know, was like, so she goes back to her house, her brother. Oh, and that was the other thing. Her brother had come to visit her too. Mm -hmm. And Hank saw her outside saying goodbye to him and thought got all jealous because he thought that it was somebody else. Yes. And it wasn't. It's just her brother. And so she gets back to her home and the brother had offered her Mm $50,000 for this bet. $50,000. $50,000. But she wasn't going to keep it for herself. She was nope. going to donate it to her favorite charity. Yep. And she wound up donating it for vets to get the care that they need so for our veterans. Cute. Yep. Such a good idea. And so for Christmas, Hank sent her this coin that was some ancient Greek coin thing, or whatever. But I guess that her dad also really liked that stuff. Oh, okay. And so... They went into the study and he's like, someone must know you really well to know how much you would appreciate this. And so then, oh, she had sent him a couple thousand dollar watch. I want to say it was Swiss Army. I could be totally wrong, but basically it was like a really, really, really good diver's watch. Oh, when she left, she had left the box at his apartment and it was all wrapped and everything. And she had said that she had forgotten her brush. And so she went back to get it. But she was actually putting this present down. And it was like a $4,000 watch. But it was like a good diving watch or whatever. Was that whenever she was talking, she would said about she wanted to go so many Yeah, like how many fathoms. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, you're confusing sailing and whatever. That was cute, too. I liked he said to her, it makes me think of us sometimes. How can you be so smart and be so dumb, too? And it was like, yeah, that's how it that goes. happens. But then... She got upset that he was still not responding to her or something. And so she she was moved back into school with her roommates and everything. And she was like, you know what? Let's go out. And so they get all dolled up. They all go out. She's like, I'm bringing someone home. And she does. But the guy was actually respectful of her and just put her to bed, clothed. And he fell asleep on the floor just to make sure that she was okay. And so then they were talking the next morning, whatever. And then as he was leaving, she opens up the door and there's Hank. Or no, he wasn't leaving yet. Sorry. There was a knock on the door. She goes to answer it. It's Hank. And then this other guy was like, wait, what? And leaves. And that's when he realized he's like, yeah, she's spoken for. So then he tells her about how he wants to take her away for the weekend, whatever. As they're driving up, he's like, I have a ring for you, blah, 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 blah. And he winds up taking her up to this cabin. And then he actually does propose to her. Like, I think that she thought that he was totally joking. Mm -hmm. He proposes to her. And then they spent the whole weekend in bed. And then they were trying to figure out how. So she was getting an internship in Greece. I think it was Greece. And then he was going to have to go out for some job or whatever. And they both wind up just talking about how, how are they going to make it work? And they're like, we'll make it work. It's not going to be an issue. So then the last chapter is... You hear some guy is screaming, I don't care who she thinks she is. I'm working, blah, 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 blah. I've been doing this for however long. She must be a real piece of work if she can just demand. And then Maddie opens up the door and it's her. And so they both were whining. She was getting the internship to do this project that he was also bidding for. I don't know if he was bidding for it or whatever, but he was getting called up for this project that she was on the other side of the team for. And so that's how it ends. But I didn't know there was a second one at the very end. Yeah. It says, what's it called? Maine Squeeze. I don't think they ever talked about that. Did they talk about that on G? Love in Maine was released on March 12th. And then the sequel's release date was September 3rd. So it was only six months later. Oh, oh wow. later changed to August 13th. Okay. Huh. So yeah. Let's see if it's on Amazon. Yeah, we will have to get it now. I want to see if it's a sequel to that for real or if it's just a different storyline because it doesn't actually say a sequel. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. It says, fall in love all over again this September with a new novel inspired by General Hospital. You fell in love in Maine. Now it's time to discover your Maine squeeze. It doesn't say that it's the same people. A sequel. Maine squeeze. Oh, it does say as seen on General Hospital. Okay. Connie announces at the March 12th book launch, Connie announces that there will be a sequel to the book called Maine squeeze. Oh, I didn't realize that she announced it. And now we have to find it. That one says it's by Molly. Yeah, it does. But then on Goodreads, it has six. It has a 3.67 rating and it has 665 ratings with 79 reviews. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely obviously hasn't won like any awards, awards. or anything, right. but it was, a, it was a fun beach read. It was a perfect, it took me three sittings, I think. Someone else said that too on one of the reviews. Yeah, it was. I didn't get to finish it because my life was crazy this week. But it was, should have been a quick read if people didn't keep interrupting me. Yeah, this book was such a great surprise. I found myself not 
wanting to read it because I knew that the book would have to end. I read the book in three sittings, breaking only for sleep and work. But the thing I liked the best is that it wasn't anything to do with the show. Right. You know, and you could definitely see where Connie worked her way in. Yep. I'm excited to read the other one. It looks like it's only available on Kindle, though. Hmm. This is going to be like Night Shift too. Oh my gosh. I will be so the second season. So what was your favorite part? I mean, obviously it was a good fantasy because I'm sorry, but some of that just is not the way that things happen. Most of it. Yeah. Especially considering that that was supposed to be her first time and it was all just perfect. Oh or yeah. That we forgot about that. <laughs> yes. She, she, he asked her. Yep. And she was kind of tried to not answer the question, but then it was obvious that, yeah, but it was just so magical and perfect and whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. Just like a soap opera though. (laughs) Yes. Just like a soap opera. Or just like an actual 12 year old would, but yeah, it was definitely not written from. Yeah. Hopefully Molly wrote it like her first kiss. They had their first kiss or whatever. And then that's why it took such a dramatic turn whenever Connie got a hold of it. Yeah. Connie liked to put some more adult parts to it. So. All right, so we're going to have to find it. It yeah, looks we'll like it's on Kindle. It. Okay. We can Kindle it. I just wish that it was real. I know. I prefer hard copies of books. Um, I think my favorite part was just seeing the struggle that she was having with wanting to be all about him all the time, but realizing that that's not what he needed. And so she would ask questions and then she would kind of reassure him, like, it's okay if you don't want to tell me all of this. You are affecting the relationship, but I understand you can only give so much instead right. of pushing 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 yeah i thought it was fun i think it would make a good movie yeah it could definitely be a hallmark movie yes hallmark movie and then just tone down it's some hallmark of it. meets bridgerton yes there we go okay that's our review <laughs> <laughs> i liked it though yeah it was cute i'm glad we finally well i still have to finish it but i'm glad we finally read it after all this time i'll finish it and see if we're about to talk about anything i will i will let you know and we can talk about it quickly on monday's recap of this week's shows sounds good so have a good weekend and we'll meet with the peer bye bye if you enjoyed today's show we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform don't forget to leave us a review and you can also follow us on many social media channels just search for peer 54 podcast also we are not perfect so if there's something that we missed or messed up just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com 